All right, guys, the attendance was 19,125, um, 25th consecutive sellout. The gate was 5.67 million. The uh, bonuses went to Almeida, Walker, Aldana, and Diaz. They all won $50,000. Dana, to your left. Um, John Kavanaugh put out, did you see the, uh, the tweet that he put out before I asked you about the fight? He said that he and Johnny Walker were forced to leave the arena. Johnny had no shoes on. They weren't allowed to stay, watch the fights or anything. Do you know what went on? I don't. Lene just told me a little bit about it before we walked in here. I guess ever since COVID, they started this thing where they get the fighters right out of here. I, I don't know why that happened or what happened. I mean, yeah, we're not throwing Johnny Walker out in the street shoeless. I'm sure. There's a picture, there was a picture of him with no shoes on leaving yeah. the arena. It's, we, we fucking threw him right out in the streets, huh? Yes, apparently. It's, it's rough around here. So, I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, can you comment on, on Nate's performance and, and what you thought of the way he rose up in his final fight and not only boxed so well like everybody knew he could do, but then get to submission on a guy like Tony? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, he's so durable and so tough. And, uh, you know, I, I, I literally, we went, in, I don't know if you guys have monitors over there, but we went, in, or, or you can hear what's going on, but we went into their corner, uh, Tony's corner that round, and his corner, for some reason, told him to take him down. Said, take him down. He was chopping that leg, he kept kicking that front leg, obviously doing damage. His corner told him to take him down, and Nate capitalized on that the minute he did it. Did you feel like uh, uh, Tony and Nate delivered the fight you expected? Uh, was that kind of the, what you thought they would do? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know what I mean? Listen, they're, they're, they're both older guys that have been around here for a long time. And uh, yeah, yeah, the, the, uh, it was what I expected. What do you make of what Nate said that he's open to a return to the UFC? Obviously, he said he's going to do something else, but uh, open to a return down the road. I mean, uh, you know, obviously, Listen, he's 37 no, now. No matter what Nate does from here on out, I mean, the, the, the kid, this is his house. He's been here forever. It's been a blast having him here. And, uh, uh, you know, I wish him well. He and I had this discussion months ago at the offices. I, you know, whatever he moves on to do, I wish him nothing but the best. If he's starting his own organization or, you know, getting into promoting or, or doing something else, it's, I, I wish him nothing but the best of luck. It's been awesome having him here. Two other questions for me. Obviously, you know, people pretty much expected Hamza to do what he did, uh, get, especially given short notice and Kevin couldn't train for the wrestling. I don't, know, I don't know if anybody expected him to do exactly what he did. You don't know what to expect from that guy. The wrestling for him to go out, and this is like his fourth fight that he's never even taken a punch. He's an absolute fucking freak of nature, and I don't think anybody expected that, especially against Kevin, who's, who's six foot two, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know if anybody, to, to say that somebody expected that, there's no fucking way people expect Well, I, tw I tweeted I didn't it went by first that. round, so. Huh? And then I had picked him in the first round. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. The question was, Hamza kind of, you know, he messed up the show. He misses weight. He's not. He's unapologetic for missing the weight. And like Joe asked him in the cage, like, how do you put him in a title fight if he misses weight by eight and a half pounds? So wh what's your reaction to it? I know you're generally pretty lenient on those things. What, what, what was the question? What, what, is your, what is your reaction to putting him in a title fight at some point if he's missing weight by eight and a half pounds? I mean, yeah, no, it's, it's his problem. Yeah, it's a problem that he missed weight. I don't know. We, we, we got we to gotta look at it and figure it out. And, you know, what makes sense is for him to fight at 180. So we'll see. Yeah. Dana, just how hard was it to react to yesterday and to get these fights reshuffled and everything? You've been through a lot of stuff with the company and being able to react, but how crazy was yesterday? Well, I mean, yeah, it was crazy. But, you know, if you think about it, 22 years we've been doing this, however fucking long we've been doing it. You know, it's what we do. We, we, we've always, we, we had that one year where the main event fell off. What, what is this, a mash unit? What's going on around here? It's crazy. <laughs> what, what are we in a, this is insane. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we had a year, one year where every main event fell off that year. And we had to, you know, do some switching around. And it's, it's a nightmare, but we get it done. Did you guys talk to Hamza about, like, look, what, what exactly went wrong? What went wrong? Why did you miss weight? And then did you talk to him about, like, the fact he wasn't sorry and he was joking about it and stuff, you know? 
Have we talked to him about what? Have you talked to Hamza found find out what went wrong with his no. weight cut and did you no. did you think anything of him like he wasn't very sorry, he was joking about it online? Did you is that like it's obviously not very good, right? Yeah. I mean, what should I talk to him about? Be smaller. You should be sorry, get smaller. I mean, it is what it is. It happened. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll go back this week, come up with a plan, and, and uh, like I just told Kevin, probably have him fight at 180. Thank you. Right here. Uh, how did you score the fight between Daniel Rodriguez and Lee? I uh, thought Lee won the fight. And a lot of people thought Lee kind of got the, the short end of the straw because he waited he did. 70, Daniel. He did. They're right, you're right. Uh, the judges were wrong, in my opinion. Um, it wasn't even like I was like, wow, that was... That could have gone either way. I was shocked when they said split decision. Is there an update on Chris Barnett? Uh, something looked like something was wrong with his face when he was leaving uh, in the pre Yeah, he was discharged, right? Yeah, he was discharged. He's fine. But there was nothing like, like the commentary thought those like nerve no, damage. He had a nasal fracture. And, uh, what did you make of the Irene Aldana knockout? First time you see a, a, a kick to the, the liver off her back. Yeah, I didn't realize what happened until I saw the replay, and uh, I thought maybe she broke her rib. And then, uh, yeah, that was pretty impressive. What do you do with Tony Ferguson moving forward? Do you want him to stay at welterweight? Do you want him to go back down to lightweight? I don't know. I don't know. Right here, right now, I don't know. He had also said at Media Day that a tough season between him and Habib was actually greenlit by everyone, and they're just waiting on Habib. Now, what was greenlit? A season of the ultimate fighter between him and Habib. He said that it was greenlit by everyone, and they're just waiting for Habib. No, I don't think we said we... Did I say we greenlit it? That's what Tony said at Media oh. Day. Yeah, we haven't even started talking about the ultimate fighter yet. Hey, Dana. Hey. How, how early yesterday did you guys know that Hamza was going to miss weight, and how early did you guys start to kind of try to figure out what to We do? didn't know till he would. Well, I mean, we knew he was having trouble cutting weight early. Uh, and, uh, yeah, what time? I mean, what, what are you asking me? Yeah, I mean, uh, before, obviously before he waited, you guys had an indication yeah, that he may not make right. weight. So already you guys are kind of scrambling to try to figure out what would happen if he missed weight and what, what you guys would do? What well, wasn't that we were, we were scrambling if he was going to, we knew he was going to miss weight. The, do, the doctors went up to see him. When the doctor goes up and the doctor calls the fight off, if you're, if you're dancing around the question that there was some conspiracy theory that... No, no, no. Not okay, because there's some fucking course. lunatics no, no. On, the, uh, on, the, on the internet that think that this was all staged and planned and, and whatever. If you think... That the crazy dudes that we had here this, this week could be orchestrated into something that would be, yeah. you're literally out of your mind. Yeah, th this, this all happened, and, and, and we had to deal with it, and uh, I just couldn't wait to get tonight over with. And then what are the conversations like with, with Nate and Hamzat yesterday? Because obviously Nate was like, I'm not, I'm not fighting that guy if he's that, is that heavy. So what, what are those conversations like? Yeah, well, well, we knew as soon as he was, wasn't going to make weight that the fight wasn't going to happen. Right. You know, forget, forget about Nate. The, the athletic commission wouldn't have let the fight happen at, at that big of a weight discrepancy. So, um, yeah. So you immediately start getting to work, figuring so it out. What are, what are the, those guys saying to you? Like, what is Nate saying? What is Hamzat saying? As far as like what, what happens next, like when you're when you're ta discussing like what what the next day is going to look like, who they're going to be fighting, what are, what are they saying? Are they agreeable? Are they not agreeable? Are I, they I not don't, fight? listen. They're go, going into something like that. There's obviously a lot of uh, emotions and and uh, you know you got guys that are cutting weight and you know it's 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 it's, uh, it's always. It's, it's always work to get it done, and, you know, you just got to put in the time, walk these guys through it, and, you know, it's not fun. It's not fun on this side, but you get it done. And then, and then just last thing for me, with Nate, is this just like another kind of chapter in the, in the weird, like, Diaz lore? The, the week starts, Hamza's the opponent, the week ends, and he's submitting Tony Ferguson in front of a sellout crowd. I mean, just another kind of chapter in that, in that crazy book that those two brothers have written. Yeah, um, yeah, it's, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Dana, hey, can right you, can you expand on that, Dana, please? <laughs> What's that? Can you expand on that? <laughs> <laughs> no. I, I mean, I don't even know what to say. It's just, uh, this is a crazy business, man. It's a crazy business that we're in. And uh, 
That's why everybody's always asking me about, uh, you know, what are you going to do to this guy and what are you going to do to that guy and what are you going to do, you know. You guys don't know 90% of the stuff that goes on behind the scenes. It's just, it's the business that we're in. It's, it's, it's a crazy business it's, and, it's, and, and it's a tough business. It's not as easy as it looks. That's why all these guys that say they want to get into the fight business. Um, careful what you wish for. Not as easy as it looks. Dana, question on the business there. Uh, is there a risk that Conor against Nate 3 might happen outside of the UFC now that Nate is out of contract? I have no idea. I have no idea. Is that, that's not something that keeps you awake at night, no? Not much keeps me awake at night anymore. <laughs> they have two of the biggest pay-per-views in UFC history. And it's... Yeah. Should that keep me awake? <laughs> no. <laughs> it doesn't. Not much keeps me awake anymore. We, we, roll with, we roll with it, man. I've been doing this for a very long time. And, uh, you know, we roll, we roll with the punches, pun intended. Thank you. Hey, Dana, right over here, in the back, in the middle. Yeah. Um, with Irena's performance, a lot of people are talking about, did she just lock in a potential title shot against Amanda Nunes at 35? I just wanted your thoughts. I mean, is there a competition between her and Catelyn to see who would get the next one, or did Aldana do enough? We, yeah, we love Aldana. I, I don't know what we're going to do next, but, you know... Like I said, we don't make fights the night of the fights, but, you know, she looked great. She's awesome. We love her. What, what an incredible way to finish a fight tonight. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what's next for her. To clarify something you said earlier, you say you like Hamzad at 180. Are you talking about more catchweight fights for him, or do you mean a full move up to 185 middleweight? Yeah, that's what I meant. Thank you. No more catchweight fights. Dana, to your right. Yeah. Down here, Chris Barnett had one of the more exciting opening rounds of the card tonight. Was there any discussion of giving him any um, fight of the night bonuses? Who? Who did what? Yeah. Oh, was he not eligible because he had missed weight? Is that what? I know. Yeah, that, that's gonna, that's that's a bummer for you. Missed guy. weight. Yeah. But I'm gonna get to see about him. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna take care of him. I'll, I'll I'll do a little something for him. Great. Um, so after the card was changed and the main event was changed, did you, how much of a, a bump did you see on social media in terms of how this fight was trending? And what happened at the box office? I know that there was an offer for ticket refunds. Yeah. I actually was talking to Ioli about that this morning. Uh, so whenever the main event changes, you, you can refund tickets. Not only was not one ticket refunded, uh, the day that all the craziness was going on, we sold 250 tickets that day when it didn't even know what was going to happen or how it was going to go. So, um, and, and like I announced when I came in, it was, it was our 25th consecutive sellout, $5.67 million gate, and the pay-per-view killed it. There's some chatter online about Hamzat meeting Colby Covington. Any possibility of that happening? I don't know. After he just didn't make weight, I don't know. But obviously, there's a lot of possibilities for him, um, you know, possibly at 170 or at 185. Final question for me. You had a very successful fight in France, and there are cities in the United States and countries around the world that are opening up post kind of this COVID haze. Where's the next city, whether, whether in the United States or around the world, that the organization is looking to get into? Yeah, um, we literally just were, had a meeting the other day and we're talking about, um, we're, we're seriously talking about Africa now. We're actually starting to look at venues and, uh, and uh, cities to, 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 hold, to hold an event. So Africa is going to happen very soon. Hey, Dana. Yeah. Uh, just two quick ones for me. Um, to piggyback off her question about Colby, is Colby's legal situation getting in the way of booking a fight for the remainder of 2022? No. No, we, we were talking to Colby uh, last week. So there's a possibility he can return this year, right? Yeah. And then there's rumors about Gilbert Burns versus Jorge Masvidal, and Gilbert's been very vocal about that fight. So is that something that you'd be interested in booking? I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Dan, you're right. Hi. Were you surprised uh, about the reception that, uh, that Hamzat got? He was booed out of the building, basically. 
uh, the Hamza guy? No. Our fans are, are crazy, man. If you don't make weight, I mean, th this, is, this is how it goes when you don't make weight. Um, these guys are all professionals. They're, they're supposed to show up on weight, ready to fight, in shape, et cetera, et cetera. So, no, I'm, I'm not shocked at all. I am shocked by how many helicopters there are around here. They're looking to give Johnny Walker shoes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After he was thrown in the streets. Dane, I know it tends to be crazy when you guys were trying to scramble to get these fights together. A lot of times we know it's, it's money that tends to move the line at times. I know you will never tell us the numbers, but is there any particular fighter out of the six that maybe benefited the most with agreeing to take these new fights? Is there a uh, fighter that benefited, benefited the most from what? Money-wise, like who got the biggest bump for agreeing to, to switch fights? Who got the biggest bump? Uh, well, these guys all have deals. So none of the money changed for them to, to switch the fights? They just took the deals going in? Everybody has a deal. <laughs>